<laughs> when was he on the show? Uh, he's been on a couple times. That's he's instant amazing. offense right there. He's uh, he's he's funny. He's one of our favorites, huh? Oh yeah. yeah. He's part of the two. Who was Thomas that Gilbert Club. Godfrey? Who was that? That was Marlon Wayans. <laughs> and then you got me. That's great. And now awesome. you're part of the two timers club. Yeah. 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 Feels good. I got to be honest. What do you think of this beat here? I like it. This is uh, Patrico's little side project here. Yeah. You put I, this together? I did. He's got a new group there called Futon Wilson. Futon Wilson? Yeah. I like the beginning of this, but then it went into like I'm feeling like I'm on a beach in Jamaica. Yeah, I hate it too, Dan. What's, what's, what's the problem <laughs> I didn't there, say, Dan? I didn't say I hated it. I yeah. just, you know, I mean, I kind of, you know, sitting down, getting some sun. I liked, I liked the beginning of it. Can we go back yeah. to the beginning of it? <laughs> Oh, He's a speed, pool side. You know Dan's a speed metal guy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, what I'm kind not. of music you went to? I like it all. I really do. I'm not huge into country. I'm more into... Uh, you like a Casey guy? No, no. I, I'd say like the point music. Mm. Yeah, definitely. So what's on a, a Dan McLaughlin playlist? Like what, what do you listen to in your car? T Grizz. Because my kids listen to T Grizz. You don't even know who T right, Grizz yeah, is. Tigris. Yeah, well, maybe you should get caught up with the kids. Uh, All of your kids. Uh, 11 and 9. 11 and 9. Boys, girls, what do you got? I got a boy and a girl. Boy and a girl. Yeah. Everybody that's healthy? Good. Everybody's great. Yeah, well, that's healthy. good. Um, thanks for asking. Are you uh, talking yeah. about T Grizzly? Yeah, T Grizzly. Is, is, uh, this looks like there Give might be. Some, is there some curse words? Oh, there's in here? a lot. Yeah. Yep. You, you is there any clean T Grizz? Um, let me see. Oh, are you talking about T Grizz out of D Detroit, Michigan? Yeah. T oh, yeah. oh, Detroit, yeah. Michigan is T Grizz. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. know that. First yeah. day out. Yeah. Riz, I'm just, I'm just yeah. gonna yeah. say yeah. it says T Grizzly first day out clean. Okay. First day out. Yeah. That's, yeah. I love that. Here we're rolling. Hit me with some T Grizz. My favorite joint of his. Mm-hmm. This is where your kids listen. How old are your kids? I got 14, 13. I got twins that are 11. Wow. You know, you don't have you to have a baby every time. What? What's that now? You, you don't have to have a baby every time you have sex. Yeah. Oh, no, a team. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> Even during the quarantine. I thought that would be a, a pot. maybe a benefit. Cook right. Let's keep that water 400 degrees Fahrenheit. You ever been inside a federal courtroom? You ever went to trial and fought for your life? Being broke, dear, something to This is what my kid gave me. We were listening to this yesterday. You like this? Yeah. Look at me not driving German engineering. You don't want your baby mama. Yeah, I don't know if I can get down with this. It's not for me. You may jump. Let me jump. All right, jump. To the castle. Hey, JR. I'm at home when I'm down near Lexington. Now it's gonna about ready to pick up. Come on. When you take off, I look back and try to rescue them. I got man's to make sure you get the rest of them. Boom, boom, Tell us to, uh, I was in a, you're walking a pro jam. I like Pearl Jam and uh, listen to Nirvana. Uh, no Sound Garden. I <laughs> See, I love I love Nirvana. I love Pearl Jam. I'll go Stones. I'll go Beatles. I'll go Pearl Jam. I got T Grizz, um, old school Public Enemy. Mm. So I, I I I go all over the place. I'll and do a little country. Is he a guy that he does, is his platform a lot of it like coming out from the streets and going to prison and coming back out kind of? Because he I think he so. Definitely went to prison for a while. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, according to my son. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. robbing other dormitories while at school and stole twenty thousand dollars worth of electronics. Yeah, you know, well, that was a sidebar. Right. Yeah. Th I mean, but that now was just, he's risen from the ashes. That's right. That. Yeah. I. That's what I've been told. I just like the beats. <laughs> I've been watching uh, on, on Patrico's uh, recommendation that show 60 Days In. Have you seen that show 60 Days I In? I haven't. Is it good? It's on A&E. So they put it's the best. So really? They put like five or six people into re like real prison. Oh, they, that's what they, they, they actually aren't people that should be incarcerated, correct? Mm -hmm. yes. But yet they put them. I have seen that. So like the warden wants to do this secret project to find to out find how out, yes. drugs I have are seen that. <gasps> yes, I have seen that. I watched that. <clears throat> That's not, uh, that actually is not new, correct? No, 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 no. Yes. It's I saw old. that a few years ago. Yeah. I like that. Wonderful. And those people get freaked out, too. I mean, they're like, get would me you? out of here and, you know. Yeah, I would. Yeah. No, somebody, I wouldn't do that. Somebody, we talked about it last week, and somebody sent over an email asking us, like, how would we fare on that show? Yeah. Like, if we not were good. in an actual, in the actual prison system, and they, you know, they do the intake, and they give you your cot. Or your your role, and they put you in. Yeah, you're just in, and mm -hmm. you're in. Uh, did they have any guesses as to who would do what? They did not. They just asked what our thoughts would be. I have my own personal thoughts on how I think we would do. Here, here's where I'm at with I music, by the way, well. too. I'm open minded on anything. So somebody says, "Hey, I want to, I want to play this music." I'm okay, great, sure, just whatever. Yeah, I don't care. Play it for me, and I'll decide. Yeah, I like so it like or your not. music, I I listen to it. Mm. I'm I'm whatever. 
How you guys I, doing? Everything? I, everything great. good? Everything's yeah. great. Yeah. Everything's great. Good. I would play the role in the prison thing. I'd play the role of the guy in the corner crying. That's what I would be. <laughs> like, whose pocket could I hold on to? Could I hold on to somebody's pocket? I actually got my son, because we've, we've been watching, I mean, everybody's watching so much TV during the quarantine. Sure. Now we're starting to kind of come out of it and being able to get out of your house and do different things. I got him to watch Shawshank Redemption the other oh, day. So, great movie. Yeah. so now he's, faves. you know, it's, it's my favorite movie, yeah. I think, ever. So now he's kind of old enough to understand a little bit what's going on. He's like, Dad, this is, this is awesome, Shawshank. Mm -hmm. So we watched Shawshank together the other night, and he's like, I'm in. This is great. So, and how old? How old of a son did you watch this with? Fourteen. Mm. So we were watching Shawshank. So right. Yeah, that's awesome, man. You could yeah. you could watch movies that you love with your kids. Yeah. Like I, the first time I watched Star Wars with my son, they're all into that too. <sighs> yes. We had a moment. <laughs> yeah, we had a moment too. We had a moment. Yeah. We 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 wait for those to come out. We get the tickets early on the opening night of yeah. the the new Star Wars and that's stuff. That that's over there. that's a big deal for us. Yeah. We're even though that. it was it was pretty much garbage that last one, my son enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. They Air loved Friday. it. Yeah, my son said A plus plus, Dad. And I said, you know what? It was kind of terrible, but I liked it too because you liked it. <laughs> I liked it. You liked it. It was okay. It was yeah. I, we we then then we went back and went in order. We put them all back in order, even though some of them seem so outdated. But mm -hmm. yet you go back and you put them all in time order. Yeah, kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. What else are you gonna that. do? We've done that. Yeah. Uh, and and speaking of music, this summer was supposed to be. The summer of concerts in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. We had so many great yeah. bands coming to town. Everybody from Rage Against the Machine to Pearl Jam to Love Tool, Rage to Against the, the Machine to the Stones to Motley Crue and Def Leppard and Poison. I like I all them too. To uh, Alanis Morissette, like her. Canceled everything. It's all right. You got to stay positive. Like I'm, I'm positive with baseball. I'm trying to be positive about that. I'm I'm taking an optimistic, cautiously optimistic view that we'll have baseball this Wednesday, year. Wednesday, the players are supposed to be back at the stadium. That's July 1st, right? Yeah. Yeah. They, they, well, they started testing this weekend. So, so what does that mean, started testing? So you're getting the coronavirus test. I mean, that's happening. That's you know? happening. Yeah, I mean, guys are coming back, and they're funneling back into town, and that's why it was so important to get the economic deal like we talked about last time because they, it was a race against the clock, literally, just to get the 60 games in, because everybody's so worried and baseball's so worried about the second wave of the virus coming through in the fall. And it was really important because you wanted to get the postseason in. And that's where the big money is made for really baseball and the owners. So you get 60 games in of a regular season. Then you get the, the October in, which is your postseason. Mm -hmm. uh, you get the postseason money. And then... Oh, you take a deep breath. You say, okay, we got it. We got it done. Okay, this is behind us. Now we look forward to 2021. And, you know, you, you knock on wood. You pray to God. You do whatever you got to do. But you get it done. And then you hopefully have, quote, unquote, a normal 2021. And yeah. it's behind you. Um, so, yeah, you, you, you test. Um, and if a guy is uh, positive, then you get him out. He quarantines. He has to have two negative tests before he's let mm -hmm. back in. And uh, there's a, a massive pool of players that you can pull from. Essentially, you have roughly, you have a 40-man roster, but you also have a pool of players of about 60 guys that you could pull um, from, pull from the pool, so to speak. Mm. So Your own guys or? Your own guys, yeah. Now, we were talking last week about this kind of squad that would be just available, like, for spare parts. In, in Tennessee, Okay. I'm not. I'm not buying into that. So if you wanted, to, so there's been talk that there's this pool of players that have not been signed, and they would be competing. I know what you're talking about. There's been talk of like having professional players. So say like a Yasiel Puig. That's a common name that I think a lot of even average baseball fans would know. Like just the common fan, you know about him. He mm -hmm. played with the Reds and the Dodgers, and he's been around forever. No one has signed him yet. There are those guys that have been around Major League Baseball for a long time, and there's been talk that they would maybe play on like a Thursday, a Friday, a Saturday, a Sunday to stay sharp and go through some of these protocols and testing and things of that nature to stay sharp, that if a team got hit hard with the coronavirus, that you would dip into that, sign them, add them to your spare, roster. The spare parts. Too. Right, and bring them in. I don't, I don't think that's realistic. I don't think they're going to do that. I think that there are so many players available on your rosters and with your teams and with your organizations that they're going to do that. I think they're just going to try to do that as much as they can. But how are the other players who are not? Because so, they're going to get down to a 28-man roster. 
So How? it's going to start with 30, then 28, and then get to your 26, which would be your normal quote-unquote season. But, but if there's no minor leagues going... So you have a taxi squad, and... And, and they're going to practice with the team to stay... To start, start. and then they're going to go down to Springfield, Missouri. So your Springfield was your double-A affiliate. Those mm -hmm. guys will go down there and just kind of stay sharp. And they'll be tested, like just like everybody else, right. going in and out of you know the ballpark. And, and the, guys, this essentially comes down to, as simple as it sounds, being safe... And, and for two months, asking you as a teammate, if, if Jeff Burton is my teammate, I'm the shortstop, you're my second baseman, I'm saying to you, look, in years past, if you're going to be a good teammate, I, I would love it if you would put your arm around me every once in a while, pat on the butt and say, hey, nice job getting that bunt down, nice pitch, nice job, you know, moving run over, or thanks, thanks for the support. Now, I'm literally asking you, because I am dependent on you for my health and safety, don't go out. Don't go to a bar. Yeah, they're going to have to police themselves. Absolutely. That's the best way to put it. Don't go to that party. Don't they have, have people to, to your themselves. room. Mm. Don't, don't, don't do these things. Man, you know the TMZs of the world are just waiting to get somebody on camera. Well, they already have. Damn, I mean, have they really? Well, uh, they, they've gotten... Now, this is prior to teams reporting. Like, for instance, I saw a catcher on another team. Um, he was at a party, you know, and, and I think he had like a red cup or something and had a shirt off and you could see guys were kind of partying and mm -hmm. stuff and there was no masks there was no social distancing and you could see that you know it was exactly against the protocol it's a hundred pages over a hundred pages of protocol and safety measures that they've given the players i mean it is yeah they're talking about this operations oh manual. man it is so detailed pages <laughs> it's like when they you got to understand the nba and the nhl they're going to go into a bubble system right it's a hotel that, and and they've got like the NBA is going to Disney World. They're going to hunker down there. And the NHL is still looking at cities. I, I know a lot of it has been talked about either Toronto and Vancouver and Vegas. They're, they're not down to their two yet. I think they're looking at two where Major League Baseball is looking at going into the home cities. And so you play the game. You go to and say, you're on your own. Yeah, Wrigley Field. You hop on the bus. You stay socially distanced. You wear a mask at all times. And you go to your room. That's what you do. That's it. Hmm. It's your that's, job. That's yeah. what you do. Yeah. Well, the, the manual says masks will be worn by all non-players in the dugout and by everyone on road trips. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like, they lay it out in this operations manual. Uh, what about this wet towel thing? So, if you're a pitcher, as we've seen so many times, a pitcher will go to his fingertips, right, to get a better grip of the ball. They're going to let you wear, or not wear, but put a wet towel in the back of your uniform, your back pocket, and you'll be able to go to that. Yeah, like nothing, like no pitcher's ever going to put anything on that. No, there won't be pine tar or Vaseline no, or anything like that. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Come on. No, no, not at all. Tequila? I, what? I believe in everything that they're going to do is going to be proper. Yes, uh, The of DH will be in the a, in the NL. Yep. Uh, spitting, fighting, tobacco, bat boys and bat girls. And uh, buffet-style food spreads. Out. Wow. Everything out. So who's going to get the bats? So you could, I, I've been thinking about this, so I guess your on-deck guy would do it, or you could have, like, Mike Schilt run out there and grab the bat and bring it back in. You could have, They could, they could do it with you know, a very, very long string, so when I drop the bat, you, so could you just, just pull, pull it, it in from there. Yeah. I think Fred Bird will be a part of it. Really? I'm dead serious. Cause it, in the that KB, makes sense. In the KBO games, they have had, that is one of the weird things I've noticed in the KBO when I've watched those games, and I've watched a bunch of them. So um, they actually have... They've, they've had, like, some of the teams have said, okay, send us your favorite, um, uh, you know, mascot cutout, or send us a picture of yourself in a full blowout, you know, and we'll put mm -hmm. it in the seat, or send us uh, a parrot, send us a dinosaur, because, like, one of them is a dinosaur, and, and they'll put it in the seat. And then I look at the top of the dugout, and there is like a cheerleading squad with the mascot, yeah. <laughs> you know. And like, what? Why? Very, Why? You, you know, it's just who you, odd. Who you're cheering for? And who, I think the, who the, plays the, in Oracle Park? Is it the Giants? Yeah, yeah, the Giants. And they, the Giants are saying send in pictures of your family they, or something, and we'll yeah. put them in, you know, like the yeah, season ticket holders and stuff. Yeah, they said they're, they're we're going to, and I think it's like a hundred bucks. Yeah, and you would submit. Your face, your wife's face, and your two kids' face, yeah. you'd send it over to them, and then they are going to put it on cutouts and put them as close to they can mm. to your and, season tickets. And teams are still looking at, depending on where the hot spots are in our country, and as we all have seen, it's fluid, 
they're they're talking about somehow, some way, trying to get fans in the stands in various spots. I, I don't know how. I but, don't know how it's going to happen. But, yeah. I mean, but, for the time being, you know, the manager is, is uh, not going to be able to go to his mouth as an indicator for a hit and run. Right. That's in the manual. A lot of ear tugs. Yeah. So ear no tugs, hit and runs go this to year. your shirt, go to your sleeve, go to your belt, you know, whatever. It, it's just no going to be different. Touching. Try to get it. I, I'm trying to stay optimistic with it. I, I don't think baseball or the league would have spent the amount of money and would lose this kind of money because they're all going to lose money. Like the owners are going to lose a, a lot of money, hundreds of millions of dollars if they don't think they can try to pull this thing mm. off. They, they just wouldn't do it. Yeah. What's your job going to be? So are you going to travel with the team? or I don't gonna... know. I haven't been told. Or I don't you, know. Yeah, or are you going to be watching the game from monitors doing I think that's play? probably... So I think we'd be able to do the home games from the booth because we'd yeah, be so up, far... Right. Yeah, we're up, you know, up in the stands essentially way, way, way far away. We would have no interaction with the players. Mm -hmm. You know, probably can text them and ask them questions. And Mike Schild... I think Mike would interact with the media via Zoom calls and same thing with the players. Um, and then on the road, they probably would just, we'd probably have a number of different monitors to try to call the, the game. Camera feeds, wow. Yeah, and just do it that way and make sure that we get, I think the bottom line is we get the games on the air so we have a diversion for what ultimately is the customer, and that's the fan. Yeah. Because people look forward to it. And how long have you been doing the TV games now? 23 years. Imagine how did you first start practicing? Staring at the TV and doing, doing play by Saturday play, you know. Saturday afternoon games watching Vince Scully. And, uh, but, but I'm saying you probably NBC watched the games. On my TV. Yeah, and did the play-by-play -play yourself. And now you're I used to turn it, it down, again. and that's how I do it. Yeah. yeah. That's Seriously. how you're going to do it this season. Now. Yeah. So, so you learned by listening to Vince Scully? I, I, on TV, I did. I mean, I, I used to listen to the radio games because so many of the games, I, I would say probably back in the day when I grew up here in St. Louis, 90% of the games are on radio anyway. And then a TV game, if you were lucky, you would get the Saturday game of the week on NBC. And Vin was doing the game, and so I'd listen to a couple innings, and then I'd turn down the sound, and I would practice. Just wow. call what's the games. Your, what's your favorite call of all time? Probably go crazy, folks, from Jack. Uh, I also love on TV Vin Scully's. I will listen to the full inning. It's a full inning, not just the call of the Kirk Gibson home run, but the entire inning of the setup of the Kirk Gibson home run in 1988 by Vince Scully on television. If, it's beautiful. If, if memory corrects me, he spends a lot of that inning talking about how bad off Kirk Gibson is, right? Oh, he builds the whole thing yeah. up. I mean, And then a, all of a sudden there he is at the plate, like he yeah. knew or something. He said, you talk about a roll of the dice. Mm. You know, I mean, it's just like he, mm. he just talks about how he shouldn't be hitting or couldn't do it. And, you know, just the bill. I get goosebumps thinking about it of – how improbable it is for him to even have a chance to grab a bat right. and come up there and hit. It, it's just awesome. It's great theater. My favorite Vince Scully is, is the Buckner behind the bag. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good Behind one. the bag. Can you pull that up for me? That's, that, that gives me – listen, I grew up a Yankee fan. I yeah. was not a Mets fan. But that moment, watching it live, and I still get goosebumps hearing that yes. call. It's yeah, the, the neat thing is you can hear the surprise even in his voice. Uh -huh. So it's one of the the calls because he pray he pretty much for television stays even keel, almost on all of his calls. Mm -hmm. But even on that one, he gets elevated, and that that's not really it was been. shocking. Shocking. Yeah. The whole thing was shocking. It's the best. Can you find it, Tony? I'm try it's loading right now. Hold on. Who was that bat? Was that Mook Mookie Wilson? Yes, that bat? yes, Mookie Wilson was a that little bat. roller up the bat, up the yeah, first yeah, base yeah. line. I think it was Ray Knight. Ray Knight scored behind mm -hmm. the bag wow. for Red Sox. Ray Knight at first. Kevin Mitchell oh, Ray Knight was at first. first. Kevin Mitchell two and two to Mookie Wilson. Now we're tied. Right, so you want me to jump here? I'll yeah, jump. jump a little bit. Line oh, drive, foul ball. Foul ball. <laughs> and Marty Barrett was I out like of position I'm, because they I'm had back not really Joe picked Garagio. up. That's Garagiola. There it is again. You see, he just... Little roller up along first. Behind the back. And I hate the Mets. S smile I on love both it. your guys' faces. And I hate the Mets. Uh, so uh, it's just didn't you? Uh, didn't you and I also hate the Red Sox. That didn't you and Vin have something in common in the broadcast booth for a while? Like most words during an inning or something like that. 
Like oh, you were second to him, but only because he was by himself in the booth or something like that. So, um, and I hope that's a, I hope that's not oh, a no. sore spot. I think that no, be great. I didn't care. I um, they did a first inning, and I had to do something like it was something like ten commercial reads. It was more about commercial reads of like. Cardinal Baseball is brought to you by blah, 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 blah. Around the Horn is presented by blah, 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 blah. You know, I, I had to keep doing the thing, and it was just like nonstop is of it, like trying to get it in. Is it your producers kind of just put it in front of you and oh, go, yeah. read this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Keep reading. Read this. Yeah. yeah. It no, was just, just nonstop. One paper after another. Like, yeah. right. I can I imagine just, somebody behind me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All just right. like cue cards. Or as yeah. I'm, but go. as I'm doing the show, just read this. Yeah. Yeah. Read this. Yeah. I was very proud. They just had a thing in The Athletic. They did a, a top. I don't know. Th they did a whole thing on the broadcasters, and I was rated in the top, I think, five of the play by play guys. So hey, that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. That was very proud. Yeah. 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 I had you at eight, but I think top five is fantastic. Well, normally I get really. killed in all those, so I was very happy about that. Yeah. Look at you. I think you yeah. should be very, very proud of you. Did you watch Long Gone Summer? I did, yeah. Thoughts? Well, I had lived through it, and had. So nothing surprised me in it. I and thought this it was, was McGuire, the Sosa. Yeah, it, the, it was more run. of like a, a walk down memory lane for me. So nothing surprised me in it. Um, if I was a Chicago fan and woke up the next morning, I, I took that view of it. Um, why is Sammy Sosa not back in Wrigley Field? Like, why? It, it's over, right? I mean, it's 20 years now. They kind of glossed over that. Totally. They, they and spent I, a lot of time on that. And I, I just thought, like, why is he not back? Like, okay, the era's over, the steroid era's over, and we all lived it. It's done. It did do a, a, a um, I think it was a huge uh, part of baseball, and both guys did have a massive impact in bringing fans back to the game, whether you uh, are for it or against it with the steroid era. Mark, like, look at the difference in the two. Mark has come out and said, I did steroids, right? Mm-hmm. He was a hitting coach. He's been welcomed back into the family, so to speak. He's a coach with the club. He's in the Hall of Fame. He won a ring with the team in 2011. As a co I mean, it's 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 like welcome back. He's he's back. He's he's in. And Sammy has not even been back to the ballpark. Like he's not even back with the Cubs because he has it admitted. I I don't steroids. Well, I wanted. That's what I wanted to hear. Like I wanted to hear from Tom Ricketts, the owner, and say why hasn't he been welcome back? Why? The, yeah. the, like, you just wanted to hear some clarity. Like, the reason Sammy yeah. is not welcome back is because... Do yes. We, do we know Sammy wants to come back? Absolutely. He I does. think okay. I think that's... I think he has said... You know, he did say, look, I'm happy. I've, I'm a family man. Um, you know, baseball's been great to me. He kept on saying that. But I, I wanted to hear, I want to be back because I love the Cubs. Mm -hmm. they, they are, it's an important chapter in my life. I need to be back. And I don't think we ever got clarity with that. And that was the one thing I wanted. The other thing I wanted to know, if it's truly a documentary, um, you know, more on what did baseball know in that time frame? Like, did they just kind of like go, well, we kind of know this is going on. So and we got yeah. a lot of people coming back. So let's just move on. Um, I'm a big believer that I think Pete Rose should be <clears throat> in the Hall of Fame. I think McGuire should be. I think Sosa should be. I think Roger Clemens should be. I think Bond should be. And I think all those guys on their plaques should have something that concerns the steroid era. It's an era of baseball. And if you walk into Cooperstown, it just should say something but that pertains to that. But if you see those years... As a fan, you know. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, but, I don't think you need to say it. As a fan, you know. But our kids in 60 years from now will not understand that if they walk in there. And I think it's So some, should they put a little thing on Babe Ruth? Yes. Uh, showed up mostly drunk to games. Well, no. <laughs> I, but here's the thing. <laughs> Hammered 90% of the time. Cooperstown is not the, the Hall of Fame of Angels. Ah, no. It's, it's just, it's a walk down to me, the history of the game. What did I say? Ty Cobb was a terrible person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Dan, I know, Dan, I know you probably know, know the answer to this. Do you guys know who the Cubs traded Sosa to? Was it the White Sox? Nope. So White Sox is the only other uniform I can see him. Uh, Rangers. Well, he was right. the Rangers. Rangers right? Right he oh, started Rangers. with the Rangers, yeah. and he yeah. ended his career with the Rangers. Right. Hmm. Yeah. But the Cubs did not trade him to the Rangers. Where'd he go? He was traded to... The Baltimore Orioles. Oh, yeah, I, d I did remember that. Really? I should have remembered and that. And then they yeah. released him, and yeah. then the Nationals said, hey, we want to give you a minor league contract. That's right. We're going to pay you $750,000. And Sosa said, hell no, I'm better than that. And then he signed with the Rangers yeah. for a minor league deal yep. for four hundred grand. And it finished there. Yeah. 
Wow. Yeah, they kind of. Gl- what you guys Sosa think was of it? Really, the second fiddle for that whole thing. It was. It was definitely not an equal documentary. Oh, it was Maguire. like ninety ten. I thought it was a <laughs> or eighty twenty. It was yeah. a Maguire documentary. But the, but the the guys that that did it though, um, the producers of that were Edwardville, Sa- right? Yeah, St. Louis guys, and they were at that time in their lives. I think they were young kids, so that was kind of a, a walk down their memory lane of was, of Maguire. It was cool seeing some of the St. Louis things. Uh, I you know, I didn't grow up here, uh, so seeing some of that was. I remember following it from, yeah. from where I lived, and it was it was great seeing it from a, a Cardinal fan perspective. Yeah, uh, I can understand it not playing very well mm-hmm. outside right. of this area for yeah. sure. Yeah. That's the other part of it. I thought it was so St. Louis centric, and it didn't tell the full story of what was going on. Yeah. in that era, I've so. got a morbid question. Yeah, and and somebody just texted and asked this question: Pete Rose has a lifetime ban from baseball. When he dies, does he get into the Hall of Fame? You know, it, it, Ron Santo was a friend of mine, um, and I think uh, baseball did him a, a disservice is that Ron Santo had passed away, and he was openly discussing how much the Hall of Fame would have meant to him. And unfortunately, he passed away and then went into the Hall of Fame, and I was like, his family got to celebrate it, but he never did. That sucks. Mm. It does. I, I just think Pete should be in. Hmm. He, he's Now, he did the ultimate sin. He bet on the game, and that's awful. But you talk to people that are around this game that are in the Hall of Fame, like Marty Brenneman, the longtime broadcaster of the Reds, who's mm-hmm. so opinionated and a great broadcaster. But the one thing he says all the time, Pete should be in. Just put him in. He's the all-time hit king. Yeah, I, put saw, him in. Him. I saw him in Vegas once. He was just signing cards at a card Me shop. Me too. Yeah. And it's almost uh, sad. It was sad. It was like a little card table set up. Yep. Like, ah. I tell you I what, it's Rose, like a picnic I think, table. I think yeah. Pete Rose would even be accepting of, of going in, even if you put, like, Hey, he's in, but this is all the the terrible crap he did too. Well, that's what I mean. I, I think I he'd think be you, fine with that. I think you just show the history of what he did. I, I don't think I don't think anybody's ever put it better than what you just did, as far as put steroid people in there or cheaters in there or not. The Hall of Fame is a walk down memory lane, yeah. and yeah. that's part of the memory of Major League Baseball. It's the memory and the history of the game, the era, like the steroids part of the game is an era of the game. Yeah. Like, if you look at the guys that have hit 60 or more home runs, it's something like, whatever the number is, it's something like 85% of those guys were steroid guys. So it's an era of the game, and it explains those numbers. Right. So, to me, I, I, I've kind of come full circle on the whole thing, and I just, just put them in, it explains it, now you know. I think we should be able to have, uh, we should have people sliding in head first more into first base. Yeah. Ask Dan about, yeah. ask Dan about your rule proposal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> your rule proposal. One player gets a knife. I tweeted out that part of the new rules of baseball, it's just like I said, Rob Manfred and Tony Clark, you know, the guys that were negotiating, I said, one of the, I tweeted out one of the new new rules was as they were negotiating, they took a break and watched Naked Gun, and during every fly ball, there's a tiger released. You have to avoid the, you know. How about as one player gets brass knuckles underneath their <laughs> underneath their their uh, their gloves, and then hey, you don't know what player it is. Yeah, you, like one, it. you get to use oh, it once. Is. Even better. You just knock a guy out. You know? That's it. You, go, well, you got one. You get one time a game. One ball is a, is a, is a small explosive that you never know when it's going to You never know. Just explodes. George Carlin had a bit back in the day. Instead of a pitcher's mound, it was a pitcher's hole. So you could just pop up and throw it anytime you wanted <laughs> By to. By the way, the how much is George Carlin's comedic genius so true and still holds true today? A hundred percent. Oh, I can listen to George Carlin anytime. Absolutely. It's unbelievable. I saw oh. him in, uh, I think I saw him, what's the place downtown? I'm, I'm losing my mind. Um Whatever, the it Peabody. I, it may have been there, and I had to walk out uh, because I was laughing so hard yeah. that my side—I had tears rolling down the <laughs> cheeks of—I I, and I, I seriously, it was hurting mm. so bad. I had to take a five-minute break because I was laughing He's so hard. Yeah, yeah Jeff got an interview him once. <laughs> I did. And he was called him the wrong name. I did. I said how amazing he you're in my top three, if not my favorite ever comedian. And at the end of the interview, I said, "Ladies and gentlemen, George Carlton." <laughs> and he said, "Take the tee off." And you're right. And he hung up. I went, yeah. <laughs> awesome, uh, Dan McLaughlin, everybody. Yeah. Thanks, guys. We love having you in. Uh, fun. Anytime, just kick open the door. It's fun. You're- Apparently, I can do that. You could yes, do that because I just did it. You want to. This guy over here is allowed to do that. Yeah.